Hi everybody, my name is Tom Charles. Welcome to Blend Up Film. Welcome to the second episode of Blend Up Film, the show in which we take a look at using the free open source software Blender to produce some professional looking special effects for your DIY films. Now we've got a lot to get through today in this episode, so let's just get straight on into it. Muzzle flares have to be one of the most used effects in film, and as low budget filmmakers they're absolutely priceless to us. They can give us big budget looks with very little effort thanks to modern day software, and Blender's no exception. In fact, Blender can sometimes win up the competition because of the fact that Blender is a 3D package. The technique for muzzle flares is pretty much the same across the board, no matter what software you're using. You have three main elements, the flare itself, a puff of smoke, and environmental lighting. On top of that, you can add sparks and heat distortion if you want to get really fancy. Before we get started, to make our lives easier, we're going to turn on an add-on in the user preferences called Import Images as Planes. So the first thing we need to do is to set our render settings to match the source footage. I'm working at 720p and I'm going to be using a preset that I had set up already. Now there are two ways of working when it comes to muzzle flares. One is to use an image of the muzzle flare on a black background and the other is to make an entirely 3D version. And this is the method I'll be using, as it means I can shoot from any angle I want. Now I have to say that this part of the tutorial is entirely shamefully stolen from Andrew Price over at BlenderGuru.com. And so if you want to check out a more in-depth, blow-by-blow, screen-captured tutorial on how to model the muzzle flare, I suggest you check out the link in the description of this video. For my part, I will be doing a quick, dirty version of it. Again, I'm going to be working in separate scenes, so I'm going to delete everything in the current scene and then I'm going to rename it Compositing. Now I'm going to switch over to the compositor and turn on Use Nodes. Switch back to the 3D view and add a new scene and hit Copy Settings. You can name this scene Muzzle Flare. Add a camera to this scene, then press 1 on the numpad to align the view to a side perspective view and then hit Ctrl Alt 0 to align the camera to that view. Hit Shift A and add a UV sphere to the scene. Jump into edit mode and in vertex selection mode grab the top vert. Turn on proportional editing by hitting the O key and pull the vert out in the Z direction to make a teardrop shape. Name the object muzzle flare and to this object we're going to add a material. Jump straight over into the texture panel and add a texture but deactivate it as this is only going to be used to deform the object. Name the texture something like Muzzle Deform and leave the settings for the moment. Go to the modifier panel. Here add a subdivision surfaces modifier and then add a displacement modifier. In the displace modifier, under the texture field, choose Muzzle Deform or whatever you called it. As you can see, the teardrop is now looking more like what we're after. If the texture's default settings don't give you a good result, then you can tinker with the brightness and contrast and this might help. Now go back to the material settings and change the material type to volume. Set the emission to 5 and change the emission colour to a yellowy red. If we hit render now we can see that the effect is working. So hit N to bring up the uh, properties panel and use your source footage as a background image. Scroll forward to the frame where you wish your muzzle flare to fire and then position and rotate the flare accordingly. Size the muzzle flare to something about the size of the gun. This is apparently a really good rule of thumb for all muzzle flares. Now, as a volume material has no opacity setting, we're going to use the density setting to animate the flash. So move the timeline to one frame before you want the flare to appear, and set the density to zero. Now, with the mouse hovering over the density setting, press I to insert a keyframe. Then move to the frame you want the flare to appear on, and change the density setting to 1. Again, with the mouse hovering over the setting, press I to insert another keyframe. Finally, move to the frame after the flare wants to fire, and set the density back to 0, and hit I to insert another keyframe. So with that part done, we can make a new scene, and choose Copy Settings, and then name it Glow. Add a camera to this scene, and this time set it to Orthographic. Hit 5 and then 7 on the numpad, this will align the view to the top view, and then hit Ctrl Alt 0 to 
to align the camera to this view. Hit Shift A to add a Bezier curve and then jump into edit mode. Set it to 2D and then under the Roto Bezier settings, hide the handles. If you can't find the Roto Bezier settings then you need to turn them on in the add-ons tab under the user preferences. This was covered in the first episode. So hit V to change your handle types to vector. I tend to use vector handle types for sketching out the initial shape and then if I need to I change them to free and then smooth out this shape. So using the E key, extrude the curve to draw the shape where the subject is going to be affected by the glow. Use the F key to finish the curve. Hit the white matte button to add a white matte material to the shape which is perfect for masking. And then using the filling button you can toggle between having the shape filled or not. So as you can see pretty much all of Nick's face is covered and some of her neck will be affected too. Now while I'm still in edit mode I can add another Bezier curve to the mask and I can mask out the arms. I don't need to jump out of edit mode and add a new curve to start all over again. Once you are happy with the shape go to the frame before the flare appears and we're going to jump over to the materials panel for the mask and now we're going to use the same method as earlier to keyframe the alpha in the transparency settings. So we keyframe from 0 to 1 to 0 by holding over the setting and hitting the I key each time. This will insert the keyframe. If your subject is moving during the two frames, you may want to use the Roto Bezier tools settings to keyframe the mask for the two frames, but at the full speed it's probably not going to be that noticeable. So far we've made the flare itself and the environmental glow. We now need to add the smoke. So add a new scene, choose copy settings and name it smoke. Add a camera to this scene and switch it to orthographic. And then you can align it to the top view using the same method we used in the last scene. To create the smoke we're going to be using a stock element. Now you can get these from places like Video Copilot's Action Essentials Pack or you can download some free ones from places like Detonation Films. Or, as in my case, you can use Blender to make your own. This was made using a smoke simulator and a particle system to add some sparks. Now I'm using a ping sequence but most video types are supported although some can be a little bit temperamental inside a blender. So go to import and choose import images as planes. This is the add-on that we turned on earlier. Choose your file and make sure you check shadeless. Basically this creates a new plane which has your image UV mapped to it and the exact dimensions of your image. It's a great time saver. Under the display properties, turn on texture solid to see your image in the viewport. With the plane selected, go to the materials panel and change the diffuse colour to black. If you don't do this, it will render as white when it's not being used and will cause problems later when we're compositing. Go to the textures panel and under the settings, choose your type of image. In my case, it's an image sequence. Set the amount of frames in the image sequence. I know my image sequence is 60 frames long. And finally, set the start time to the frame at which you want the effect to take place. For me, I know this is frame 218, right when the flare is. Now move your image into place and size appropriately, hitting the Z key to toggle between wired and texture mode for ease of positioning. We now have our three main elements set up, so let's move on to compositing. Jump over to the compositing scene and switch to the node editing window. You should already have a Render Layers node and a Composite node set up by default. Duplicate the Render Layers node so you have three in total, and to these add the three elements that we've created. Add your footage using an Image Input node, and in the Frames value set it to the length of your clip. Add a Mix node. Into both inputs of this node, pipe the same piece of footage. And then into the Fact value, pipe the Glow layer and switch the type to Add. Add a viewer node and turn on backdrop. This will allow you to see the finished result. Now this looks pretty rubbish at the moment, so we're going to add a blur node between the glow layer and the mix node. Set it to fast gaussian and crank it up to the effect works. In my case, about 20 was good. So now we need to add the flare itself. Add an alpha over node and into it pipe the result of the glow and the muzzle flare layer and set it to put convert pre-multiplied. Connect this result to the viewer node to see the effect. Add a blur node between the flare and the alpha over node to remove any harsh edges. You can copy any nodes inside the node editor by selecting them and hitting Shift D. This saves a lot of time. 
Finally, we're going to add the smoke. Add another mix node and into this pipe the result so far and the smoke layer. Set the fact value to 1 and change the type to screen. And that's it. You can now go ahead and render out your scene. Now I added an RGB curves node to make the smoke layer a little more subtle and this can work for any of the other layers. Alright that's it, thanks very much for watching today. Go off now and make your own badass action films and uh, post them online so I can have a look at them. I just want to say thanks very much to everybody who watched the first episode, it was uh, an absolutely amazing response. Um, I couldn't have wished for any more than that really. Uh, I tentatively put it online thinking oh, maybe I'll get a couple of hundred hits in the first week. Uh, but at the time of going to record this video, I think I had about 11,000 and uh, about 460 odd subscribers. So thank you so much for being interested in this. And um, despite having a full time job, I will try my best to just keep plowing these videos out for you. So uh, until next time, thanks.